the true mirror of your destiny is not the physical mirror it is the word of god that is who you are and then he killed something and saw blood and put the skin on man and this is what it is i must kill you i must take you to hell but i have killed something else on your behalf i have killed something else on your behalf and i've clothed you with that thing so anytime i see you and i want to strike you i will remember that something has died for you hallelujah let not your heart be troubled ye believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would not have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself that where i am there ye may be also and whether i go you know somebody say you know it and the way you know somebody say i know the way Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Somebody say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life listen to me the bible said jesus told them in john chapter 5 that i have come in the volumes of what was written of me and i've come to fulfill the law and the prophets and everything that was said for he said that the law and the prophets all of them spoke of me so whenever we are talking about the prophets and the law and the old testament patterns and the systems we should understand that they were a shadow of a reality to come and that reality was jesus so anytime jesus made any statement or revelation or provided an information it was a revelation or a reality of a shadow a dramatized event that has happened in the old testament so when you hear jesus says that i am the way it means that it is a pattern of something that happened in the old testament and i am the truth is also a pattern and i am the life is also a pattern and if god permit whether two sundays or three sundays we are going to handle these three dimensions and one thing that you must understand about this is that how many of you know the bible says for the tabernacle of the lord has come among the midst of his children how many of you know jesus was not just a human being he was the tabernacle that was built in the wilderness so whenever you see the tabernacle that was parted into three you should understand that when jesus was mentioning i am the way he was referring to a portion one of the portion of the three their patterns of the tabernacle and if he says that i am the truth he's talking about the second pattern and if he tells you that i'm the life he's talking about the third pattern because the tabernacle was made of three patterns the outer court the holy place or the inner court and then the holy of holiest so when he says i am the way he's referring to the outer court and when he says that i am the truth he's referring to the inner court and when he tells you that i am the life he's referring to the holy of holiest and then i'm going to show you the way and when jesus says i am the way and i am what was established in the outer court you have to understand it in this manner today listen to me i'm going to center the way to the revelation of the blood somebody said the blood and hear me very well when you look at the tabernacle i think i've taught this year before but i want to repeat it for the sake of revelation it was a typology of the life of jesus and when you see the tabernacle the first arena you see is the outer court the first portion of the tabernacle which the first part was the outer court and when you enter the outer court there are two things you see you see the brazen altar and you see the bronze basin somebody say the brazen altar and the bronze basin i want to show you listen to me in the tabernacle not everyone could enter every place the outer court was meant for the majority the inner court was meant for the priests and the holy of holies was meant for the high priest but you know jesus came to make the way somebody say he came to make the way so not until you have fulfilled the duties of the outer court you have no place in the inner court 
That is why the altar court is the place, the way. Am I here with the church at all? Not until you have fulfilled the duties of the altar court, you cannot enter into the inner court. And not until you have fulfilled the duties of the inner court, you cannot enter into the holy of holiest. So as I'm coming to teach you the way, which is the outer court, I'm only granting you access to the inner court. And by next week, I will grant you access to the holy of holiest. Am I here with the church at all? Then you begin to understand your work with God. And some of you will know why there are people walking in deeper dimension in this kingdom. And some too are walking in very shallow dimension. You understand that in the outer court, there were people there in the inner court there were people there and in the holy of holiest there was one person there by the time we are through with this series somebody will find his place in the very throne of heaven am i here with the church at all somebody will find a place hear me very well listen to me listen the way to god the way to god let me begin it this way listen god is life god is life and it is an error to approach god with life Whenever somebody approach God with life, it's a sign of pride. So anybody that must go before God must go as a dead person. That his life will find expression in your life. Am I speaking to somebody at all? So two lives cannot exist in a place. So for you to gain access to the holy of holiest, somebody must be dead first. So when Jesus says, I'm the way, he was talking about, I am the death that leads to the life of God. If you don't pass through me, then you must die on your own to meet God. I am about to fulfill the duties of the outer court. That anybody that wants to enter into the inner court must first believe in the fulfillment of the law that I have established in the outer court. Then you can have access to the place. The Bible says that he has granted us peace with God through his blood. And this is what it means. The outer court had a bronze basin. And it was so huge in the time of Solomon that 18,000 gallons of water could fill it. And whenever the priest wants to go to the brazen altar, he would have to baptize himself in the water and wash himself in the water. Then after he is washed in the water, then he goes to the altar to make sacrifices. And when you read the book of Exodus, the Bible says that for the priests were were supposed to wash themselves in the altar. Otherwise, when they get to God, they might die. That is why the Bible says that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive, number one, and to cleanse, number two. Two things happen at the outer court. Blood is shed for the atonement of sin, and there is washing of blood for the cleansing of all weaknesses and iniquities. Am I here with the church at all? That is why you have to be baptized in water first when you come to God. Two things happen in the outer court. Baptism in the, in the bronze basin and then sacrifice on the altar. Am I here with the church at all? So everybody at the outer court must go through this system in order to gain to the altar and then to the inner court so you realize that when they wash themselves then they come to the altar two things are with the altar that is a knife and a fire an altar is not an altar until you see a knife and fire hear me very well if you don't pass through the knife and fire you don't have a place with god listen to me nobody enters the holy place if you have not passed through the fire so this is what they did before you enter into the holy place you would have to sacrifice a life for you then you carry the blood of that life then that blood will lead you whilst you enter the place then the blood is leading you to tell God that this is my death if you are looking for a proof, this is my death. Then you show it to the presence of God. Then God will not look at your face and look at your clothes. He looks at the blood you are carrying to show that you have shed the blood that you can survive in his presence. Am I here with the church at all? So every, listen to me, listen to me. Have you realized that in the, in the garden of Eden, the Bible said that after man ate the fruit of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, 
The Bible said there was another tree called the tree of life. And God said, if we don't protect this tree, then man will eat this tree and live forever. So the life of God in the garden was protected by something called, the Bible say, a flaming sword. A flaming sword. In other words, fire and knife. So Adam, if you want to touch this tree, then you have to pass through the fire and the knife. If you can pass through it, then the tree of life is your portion. Am I here with the church at all? Nobody enters God with life. You can't. So men were looking for ways to access God. But the only way to access God was too dangerous that no man could confront. So somebody has to come. And then when the person come, he must confront the knife and confront the fire. On the other day, Isaac asked his father, here is the knife and here is the fire. Where is the sacrifice? You don't tell me you are going to worship God. And you don't have a sacrifice. We have the knife. We have the fire. Listen to me. God provided the knife. He provided the fire. But there were no sacrifice to die on it. Until his own son came. And had to fulfill the duty of the outer court. Am I here with the church at all? If God does not see blood. Then no one have access in his presence. So hear me very well. What Jesus said that I am the way is that I am the bloody path that leads to God. Whenever you are talking about Jesus is the way, you are talking about the blood of Jesus that grants access to the presence of the Lord. You are talking about the death of Jesus that grants men access to the presence of the Lord. Have you forgotten that the Bible said that they that baptize, baptize to his death and resurrect with him. In, in, in Romans chapter 6, the Bible says that when you baptize in water, you are dead with Christ and you resurrect with him. So the, the, both, both uh, figures at the outer court were symbolizing death. Baptism means that you are, you are dead with Christ and you are resurrected with him. The altar means that blood is about to be shed. Am I here with the church at all? So when Jesus said, I am the way, he was referring to the blood that will open the door for the inner court. Do you want to know the aspect of Jesus? That is the way for you. Somebody say the blood. Somebody say the blood. A Christian who doesn't understand the blood will remain at the outer court. Yeah. And there are many still at the outer court. Because that was where the, the, the majority of the people were. No blood was speaking for them. They were just there watching. And then the priest will make sacrifices, carry the blood, and go. I came to announce to you, there is a better way. And the Bible says that if the blood of bulls and goats were powerful enough to grant people access to the throne and to the Holy of Holies, it says, how much more the blood of Jesus? This morning, my job is to break down the blood of Jesus to somebody so that you will understand the mystery of the blood. So when you are declaring the blood of Jesus, you know that you are declaring the key to the door of the courtroom of God. Am I here with the church at all? We are declaring something deeper than we think. The way is Jesus and the path of Jesus, that is the way, is the blood. That is why anyone who does not recognize the death of Jesus cannot go beyond the outer court. Because the way to God is death and if my job is to explain the blood to you i want to give you some instances in the world listen the way can make your life too good on earth that it will amaze you that blood of jesus if you understand it it can turn your whole destiny around that it will amaze you the problem is that we don't understand. So Hebrews chapter 9 says that if the blood of bulls and goat, if the blood, a comparison. So when you understand the, what the blood of bulls and goats did, then you multiply it more than one million to know what the blood of Jesus can do for you. Hey! 
in seasons like this the blood will speak for you there is a way that leads to life is the way of the blood is the way of death so when jesus said i am the way he was talking about i am the death that leads to life <laughs> and i'm going to give you seven instances in scriptures that will break down the blood to you for you to understand the reality of the blood of jesus are you ready for that genesis chapter 3 i'm going to use the first person to use is our father adam genesis chapter 3 verse number 21 unto adam also and to his wife did the lord god make coats of skin and clothe them to adam and his wife the lord god made coats of skins not one coat coats of skins this is a man who has sinned in the magnitude of satan the bible says and satan said in his heart i will ascend to heaven and i will make my throne like the throne of the most high and i will sit on the mountain of the congregation listen to me he didn't do it he said in his heart i'm not in to overthrow god i only want to be like him but the error of creation and life is ever to think that you can attain the glory of the most high so the devil understood that i have committed an offense and i deserve hell and the bible says in isaiah chapter 14 that and the lord said i will cast you down to hell so the punishment for ever thinking to be like god is hell so the bible said after god has made man and said i've made you in my own likeness and in my own image the devil said let me try to see whether I can let man join me where I am by making man do the same thing that I did. So look at it. He comes to Eve and tells Eve that Eve, do you know when you eat this food, you'll be as wise as God. In other words, if you want to be at God's level, it's this so the moment if and adam touched the fruit their motives were corrupted because they wanted to be like god that is the offense of satan and then man commits this offense and satan is waiting for the judgment of god and then god comes and looks at man and said what is this and god begins to curse those who have perpetrated this evil and he curses the serpent curses the woman and curses the ground for man's sake and doesn't touch man and then when he came man has made clothes with thick leaves one day I will, I will teach you why Jesus saw a tree with only thick leaves and cursed it it is coming from Genesis chapter 3 Adam has made only clothes with thick leaves and then the Bible said God took the leaves away and replaced it with coats of skin how can you get skins unless you have killed something and make a coat out of that thing and then he killed something and saw blood and put the skin on man and this is what it is I must kill you I must take you to hell but I have killed something else on your behalf I have killed something else on your behalf and I've clothed you with that thing so anytime I see you and I want to strike you I will remember that something has died for you am I here with the church at all let me show you a scripture Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 NLT 
and you will understand that what God did in Genesis 3 was coming down to Christ and his church. The Bible said, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on the character of Christ like putting on new clothes. Katamaya. So as we are talking now in the realm of the spirit, I am not wearing this up and down kaftan. I am wearing a garment called Christ. Am I here with the church at all? So it seems like I am me, but God doesn't see me. There is a, there is there is a sacrificial lamp he killed called Jesus and and he used his skin to clothe my life so when he sees me he's not seeing a personality called Elvis he's seeing a skin which is in the person of a sacrificial lamb called Jesus am I here with the church that is what happened listen that is we have put on Christ like Jacob put on Esau the Bible says that Jacob mother killed the lamb and put the hairs on Israel, Jacob and then when Isaac felt Jacob he says that the skin and the body is like Esau but the voice is like Jacob but as it stands now I don't check voice I check skin I don't check voice I check what is covering you your covering is what matters hey may Jesus cover somebody today I said may Jesus cover somebody today I check what covers you and he felt it and said whether your voice is Jacob or not you are carrying the cloth you are carrying you are wearing Esau like a garment and you must carry the blessing am I here with the church at all there is something that God covers us with if you want to understand the power of the blood blood is a point of judgment it's a point of punishment when God made the coat of skin around Adam whenever he sees Adam there is no second punishment again Adam doesn't need to die again why because something has died for his sake if you want to understand the blood I came to announce to you that if you are being clothed by Jesus you have to relax am I here with the church at all something must tell you to relax because something has died for you to have life Fantamaya. Ah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life the protocol of the supernatural is that you don't kill people twice and you don't punish people twice if someone dies for them then they must leave am i here with the church at all that is the protocol of the supernatural so if jesus died for us then we cannot perish but have life clap your hands and celebrate jesus am i here with the church at all so whenever you see you hear about the blood of Jesus. You are talking about somebody who was killed and he was clothed on you. That you may, you may be wrong. Adam was wrong. Eve was wrong. But the punishment went to somebody else. I had to convince myself for years to understand and we cannot beat scriptures the word of God is the word of God we can't explain him. there are times that he will bypass the offender to deal with the sacrifice and the sacrifice may not be the offender so Adam had done the wrong but God said I need to punish somebody else and clothe you with that the skin of that person so that anytime I see you I see that person I punished and I can have mercy on him celebrate Jesus the blood is a point of judgment let me go to the second person somebody say Abel somebody say the blood carries a voice Whenever you are thinking of the blood of Jesus, you are thinking of an entity that has the loudest voice on earth. And even in the realm of the supernatural. The Bible says, and God told Cain that the blood of your brother cried. It cried. It cried. Genesis chapter 4 verse 9 and 11. After all, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know Cain responded am I my brother's guardian but the Lord said what have you done listen somebody say listen your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground in other words 
I wouldn't have come after you, but the blood is crying. What have you done, King? A blood is not making me rest. A blood is saying I should come after you for revenge. Listen to me. A blood that doesn't have a voice. It's not a blood. So in Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says that for the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. If you read the book of uh, Revelation, the Bible says that for the blood of they that are matired are crying out from the earth. Blood has got a voice. That is why somebody can carry a cow, go to a shrine, cut off the head of the, uh, the cow, and whilst the blood is oozing out, he's cursing you. And whatever thing he says, the blood will keep speaking until it happens to you. The, the voice of the blood that is after you will determine what will happen to you. Blood speaks two things. It's either it is speaking revenge or it is speaking forgiveness. And it says that the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. And what did the blood of Abel speak? Revenge. It means that the better form of revenge is forgiveness. There is a blood that Jesus shed for you. And the Bible said it speaketh forgiveness for you. Am I here with the church at all? Every day, day and night. Have you not heard and read in scriptures that the Bible said we have come upon Mount Zion unto the sprinkling of blood. There is a blood that falls like rain and it speaks better things. Ah! Anyone who has reached a very dangerous stage of your life, may the loudest voice speak for you. May the loudest voice of the blood speak for you. There is a blood that can speak your marriage into being. There is a blood that speaks better things. There is a blood that speaks promotion. There is a blood that speaks forgiveness. There is a blood that when you get through the valley of the shadow of death will speak that let your deliverance come. I pray that the voice of the blood of Jesus will never be silent over your life. I pray that the blood of Jesus will speak for you day and night. Clap your hands and say, blood speak. And anyone that any satanic blood is speaking against you, whoever went to a shrine to, to uh, atone and, uh, and cut off and kill a, a sheep and a goat and a cow, that the blood will speak against you. May the voice of the eternal blood of Jesus swallow every other voice. In the name of the Lord Jesus, clap your hands and shout, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. The blood of Jesus is speaking. Listen. Whenever you hear of the blood of Abel, you should understand that the reality is that there is a greater blood speaking better things for you. Even when you are weak and you can't pray, there is a blood that knows no weakness in prayer. It prays when we are weak, it prays when we are strong. There is a blood that speaks better things. When we are asleep, it prays. When we are weak, it prays. Whilst I'm preaching, he's praying for me that God help him. There is a blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I'm talking to somebody who will sit in your car tomorrow and they will plan an accident and the blood will say never. The blood will say never. I'm talking about somebody whom they have programmed death for you this year. And when the day is due for the arrow to manifest, the blood will say never. And the blood will shield you and say, I give him 15 more years. Hey, the blood will speak and say, I give him 40 more years. I give him 100 more years. Clap your hands and say, blood speak for me. There is another power of the blood. It was revealed in the days of Noah. I'm tired. Somebody say we are still seeing the way. We are still seeing the way. Genesis chapter 8, verse number 20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord. So all the clean beasts and all the clean fowls that were in the ark that were saved, he took all of them. And sacrifice all of them in a day. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not 
again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every thing living as I have done. I won't do it again. He smelled the scent of the blood of all the clean animals. And do you know the only clean thing that ever existed on earth is Jesus. He that knew no sin was made sin. He that has never sinned died as the greatest sinner. All the clean animals were sacrificed for the unclean. Jesus did and the Bible said and you know that the life of Noah in, in my book I expanded it in that is the typology of Jesus all the clean things were sacrificed for the unclean and the Bible said the Lord smelled the sever, the scent of the blood that was coming he sent it, he smelled it and the Bible said I will, he said I will no more curse the ground in other words, what I did in Genesis chapter 3 protected Adam, but there was still a curse. Another person has raised a sacrifice that is greater than what I did. I've now seen more blood. All clean beasts that entered the ark, their blood has fallen on an altar. Therefore, my curse on the ground. So the curse of the ground was turned around as early as Genesis chapter 8. It didn't travel beyond Genesis 8 because somebody sacrificed blood. Abraham didn't come and meet the curse of the ground. And, and we are still talking about the curse of the ground today. And God cursed the ground and said, By sweat you eat. It was broken by Genesis 8. Blood! And you know the deep things about this. He says that. I will no more curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil for... In other words, now I accept the weakness of man. He did not reverse the curse because man has changed. We are, we are, we are talking about the power of blood. God saw the blood and said, I, I think I have to come to terms with the imagination of men. There is a blood speaking for you. There's a blood. He said, Now I must accept the weakness of man and know that no matter what, <laughs> there are imaginations. So I must rather have mercy. So when the greatest blood of all was sacrificed, he said, a new covenant I will make with them. I will have mercy on their unrighteousness. In other words, I know no matter what, Pastor Elvis in a way will be weak sometimes. So what I have to establish is mercy. That when he step into his weakness by my mercy, I can lift him up again. What the blood did in the day of Noah is that God had mercy on the weak nature of mankind. Do you know what the blood of Jesus has done for you? When he tells you, come, all ye that are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. He didn't say, carry it and leave it and come. He said, come with it. I will show you mercy and take it away from you. I pray that the mercy of God will be shown up in every aspect of our lives. Wherever any addiction, any situation, wherever you find yourself, may the mercy of God speak. Lift up your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. 
Uh, come on, mean it. Say thank you, Jesus. Say, say it for the last time and with a loud voice. Say thank you, Jesus. Say, who am I that you love me? In Jeremiah, the Bible says that let not the rich boast in his riches and let not the wise boast in his wisdom. But let him that boast, that boast that he knows God and he understands him. That he exercises judgment and righteousness and loving kindness on earth. He said if you want anything to boast about, boast that God exercises loving kindness upon man. For his mercies are new every morning and his compassion feel it not do you think you are doing well if you are saying god is wicked <laughs> let him that boast boast that he knows him and he understands him that he is the one who exercises loving kindness when we all think that he will destroy then he comes in and save he's the one that exercises loving kindness Kadabasha. I have many more. Speak in tongues for 30 seconds. He is the one that has loved us. The Bible said he first loved us. Even when we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. There is a God who didn't consider who we are. When he came to die, he didn't check it. He didn't check educational backgrounds. He didn't check tribal backgrounds. He showed us mercy for who we are. Hey, for one blood that was sacrificed. Oh, Kanabasa. I am a Basia, a Boya, O Nagade, a Baya, Madame, Sayanabaya, O Yanabare, Kalabana. I'm seeing myself <laughs> whilst I was yet a sinner. Christ died when I couldn't pay the penalties on my sins. You are not bigger than the sacrifice. The sacrifice is bigger than you. In the name of Jesus. Be seated. In the life of Noah, we see a God who can see blood and now have understanding for men. In all the errors we have committed in ministry, it is a certain blood God saw. Somebody spoke against Moses. The earth opened and he entered. For all the archbishops and the bishops we have insulted, that we are still alive and doing ministry, it is a certain blood you saw. The sons of Eli fornicated whilst they were doing service in the temple. And they were all killed in a day, including their own father. How many of us have we not fornicated and yet we stand on the puppet to sing? It is a blood is all. It's a blood. How many of us have we not robbed him of the glory he has placed on us? And have we not traded the glory for menial things and material things? And we have traded his voice for things that have no eternal value. And yet he cried on him and he shows us mercy. It's a certain blood is all. It's not about you. No, you have not been perfect. No. You have never been perfect. There is a blood that spoke for you. There is a blood that the eternal father, the father of all spirits saw. You have never been perfect. You have never. Moses. Moses. Because of time, I cannot let us read my scriptures. Moses. The Bible said he was in the wilderness taking care of the sheep of Jethro. And then the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm sending you back to Egypt. Go and deliver.
deliver my people whom I have a covenant with from their forefathers, Abraham. And the covenant is the covenant of circumcision. That anybody I see that is circumcised, I, God, must have mercy on him and his household. And then Moses begins to take the journey back. And the Bible said the Lord sought to kill him. And then suddenly, the wife of Moses took their uncircumcised son and then circumcised the boy and put the blood on Moses. And suddenly, the Bible said, the Lord refrained from killing Moses. Why? Because the... the ah. How can you be on assignment for me and your son is not circumcised? Don't you know the covenant? And the error of not circumcising your son is death. You are on journey for me, but I'll still kill you. After that, I'll raise another person. Then sometimes you must have prophetic wives. The wife understood that what is happening to Moses, blood, blood, blood is needed. Whose blood? Whose blood? I have few minutes. Circumcise the boy. Put the blood on Moses. God saw the, the blood of his son. Suddenly, strength came back. I won't kill you again. There is a God who has a soft spot for blood. Anytime you mention the blood. I said, God. And then they go to, he finally regains his strength and go to Egypt. Then the final day of redemption. You see, there is a way God can have the solution, but he will be messing up your, your mind with some things. When God told Moses that ten, uh, the, the rod can be turned to a serpent, Moses thought this is the only miracle that will bring deliverance. But sir, it cannot be it. The miracle of a rod becoming a serpent cannot shake the devil. <laughs> oh. Flies came, frost came, water turned to blood. Nothing happened until the last sign. God said, Death is my final punishment. So, death is about to hit the land. And the angel I'm sending is too radical that he understands nothing. The only thing he understands is the weapon of the spirit. Remember, the blood and the word, their testimony. <laughs> there are only two things this angel understands. Let me tell you, the only thing that can save you from impending death is a blood. That's why when you play around the communion, you, you are an amazement to me and the devils. <laughs> you are an amazing Paul said that Jesus told them, he said, we should eat it often, you don't understand eat the Lord say often, eat it every time and he said when you are about to eat, let all of you leave your home and come together and eat it together then on the final day look at what they did, the Bible said okay, let's read it Exodus 12, 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts. Somebody say the two side posts. The angel of death is about to pass through the land and kill every firstborn on the land. Whether you are the firstborn of Israel or you are the firstborn of the Egyptians, you must die. But God said, if the angel sees the blood, it will pass out. So this is what you have to do. Kill a sheep or a goat. Strike the blood on the doorpost. And this is how you should strike it. Strike it on the two side posts. Somebody say the two side posts. You see, every door is a square like this. So this is the side post. This is the side post. Strike the blood at this portion. 
strike the blood at this portion. And then what next? And on the upper doorposts of the houses. So one here, one here, one here. Where are the geography people? Where are the mathematicians? If you draw the lines, one here, one here, one here, pa, pa, the cross. So right from the land of Egypt, they were declaring how someone will hang on the cross and his hands will be striked and blood will ooze from his head. And out of his sacrifice, we shall be saved and we shall have eternal life. If you believe it, why don't you celebrate the one who died? The mark of the blood. The mark of the blood. So when the angel sees the doorpost, he was not just seeing blood, he was seeing the eternal Lord of glory hanging on the doors of the Israelites. And whenever Jesus is covering, have you not heard in John chapter 10, he said that I am the door. I am the door. I am the door. Listen to me. We are hidden behind a certain door. Am I here with the church at all? You must pass through Jesus to get to me. Strike it. And when the angel of death sees it, he will pass. That is why I will die a natural death. No devil can take my life. And even that one, God says I should say that I shouldn't call it death, I should call it sleep. I will sleep because I carry eternal life. The door I'm hidden behind, there is no death that comes close. Somebody say, Joseph. His dreams got so much hatred around him that at a point in time, he was sent to his brothers in the wilderness. And his brother said, see the dreamer come. <laughs> and then they planned to kill him. But then they changed their minds. And said, we can do business with him. Why don't we sell him to the slaves? To be a slave. Then we can make money. But we have to deal with our father. Who loves him so much that he made a coat of many colors for him? You see, in those days, the colors in your garment will show how much your father loves you. So if you have two colors, it shows the extent of their love. If you have just one color, it shows the extent of your relevance and importance you are to the father. So for him to have a coat of many colors, the Bible just didn't record it. It was a sign of the magnitude of the love for him, of the father for him. And the Bible said that they took the coat of many colors and they killed the lamb and soaked kite. And soaked that garment with blood. You would really want to destroy somebody and you have killed on his behalf. You have attracted God. <laughs> Do you really want to kill me? And you have sacrificed and soaked my garment with the blood. You have attracted the God who loves to see blood. So when they sold him, another also sold him to Potiphar. Direction is going. Somebody say the blood. He enters Potiphar's house. And the Bible says that, and he prospered, and everything he touched began to increase because God was with him. Somebody say the blood. Yeah. And Potiphar's wife, Potiphar puts everything in charge, in his charge. In other words, the Bible says, except only what he will eat, everything was put to his charge. What kind of favor is this? Somebody say the blood. Yeah. <laughs> and then, the wife of Potiphar, Listen, it takes favor for a woman to love you. It's just that some, it's just that some love can be dangerous. <laughs> but it takes, it takes favor. It takes favor. Some of, some of you are dating. That you, you know yourself that you don't sign checks. And yet the woman loves you. <laughs> you are favored. The men lift up your hands and say, favor, I favor. Say, favor, the blood, favor. <laughs> For Potiphar's wife, 
the Bible says that Potiphar was the chief executioner of Pharaoh the chief executioner of Pharaoh the, the chief of those who kills those who have offended Pharaoh someone say the blood and then this woman tries to seduce the boy the boy runs away and then accuses the boy of rape you want to rape the chief executioner of Potiphar and Pharaoh among all those who killed the offenders the chief you try to rape his wife and the punishment you get is prison the Bible says he was put in a special dungeon that was where those who com uh, commit errors in the palace are put you committed error in Potiphar's house what are you doing there the blood so he went and two people were conversing and they were sorrowful and said what is wrong and they began to tell him their dreams he said ah, ah, I'm here because of dreams <laughs> it's my speciality my, my brother sold me because I dream too much <laughs> then he breaks down the dream and watch this the dream was between a baker bread and a butler wine jesus our bread jesus our blood he took the bread lifted it up took the wine <laughs> the bible says we are redeemed by the blood we are we are redeemed by the blood we are redeemed by the blood we have been catapulted from the kingdom of darkness we have been translated through the blood of Jesus. Anytime you remember the blood, you have seen that thing that took you out of hell. You have seen that thing that took you out of pain. You have seen that thing that took you out of shame. You have seen that thing that took you out. Somebody said the blood has exchanged my place. Don't just mention the blood of Jesus. Have it with understanding. Do are you going for interview? Speak the blood. The blood is that which brings promotion. Are you going to write exams? The blood. Are you, are you seeking for promotion? The blood. Are you seeking for elevation in life, glory in life? The blood, the blood. The blood is that which lifts people from the prison to the throne. The blood. The blood is that that delivers people from death to life. The chief executioner's wife, yet I escaped it. The blood. A certain blood. And the Bible said his father kept the coat with the blood in it. If it was thrown away, it would have been another case. But the Bible said his father kept it. Why? So, so long as it remained with his father, the blood kept speaking for him. I pray that and, and you, you know you know the good thing the Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus ascended heaven and entered into the tabernacle of heaven with his blood so so long as the blood of Jesus remain in the presence of the father I came to tell you you might be accused but you'll be delivered you might enter the dungeons of hell but you'll be delivered you might enter the valley of the shadow of death I am not just telling you story receive the grace of God receive your deliverance clap your hands and shout is my person it's your person I believe it somebody say the threshing floor of Onan Someone say the threshing floor of Onan. First Chronicles 21. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. And there fell of Israel 70,000 men. And God sent an angel unto Israel to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld. And he repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed it is enough somebody say it is enough say it well say it is enough stay now thy hand it is enough ah. today the lord will declare the same thing over certain situations in your life stay now thy hand and the angel of the lord stood by the threshing floor of Onan the Jebusite. Then David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between the earth and heaven, having his hand at a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. So David and the elders clothed in sackcloth and fell on their faces. 
that means that the angel was quite dangerous he stored the angel in between the heavens and the earth and he has stretched for the sword and suddenly David ran with his elders and clothed themselves with sackcloth in other words angel show us mercy verse 17 and David said to God was it not I who commanded the people to be numbered I am the one who has sinned and done evil indeed but this sheep what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, O oh Lord my God, be against me and my father's house and be not against your people that they should be plagued. Therefore the angel of the Lord commanded God to say to David that David should go and erect. Somebody say, David should go. And erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Odnan the Jebusite. So David went up at the word of God which he has spoken in the land of uh, in the name of the Lord now Onan somebody else already want to go now Onan turned and saw the angel and his four sons who were with him hid themselves but Onan continued threshing wheat look at the scenario the angel has killed up to 70,000 people then when he got to the threshing floor of Onan, everybody could see him. And then suddenly God said, "In it is enough. Let your hand be stayed. In other words, don't kill anybody anymore. And then immediately David saw the angel. He ran to get up close and bow his, his face. And then the Bible says that Onan was also threshing wheat with his four sons. They saw the same angel run away to hide. But their father Onan saw the angel and it was as if nothing is happening. This is the same angel that has killed 70,000 people. I know you are killing people but I also know the, 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 the relevance of where I stand. This is not a normal crowd. You can't kill me. Do I still have a church here? Whilst others were running, the one who knows the significance of the place, it was a bloody ground. The one who knows the significance of the threshing floor, it was the one who bought it. He knew the secret. So whilst others were running helter skelter, he saw the angel and was, if you were a man, come and kill me here. <laughs> Let me show you. Second Chronicles 3 verse 1. Now, Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on where? Oh, it's declared one to go from where? Where the Lord had appeared to his father David. Have you just read that one? At the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Onan the Jebusite. So now a little information is given us about that treasure floor that when the angel got there God said it is enough I have remembered something don't continue to kill and then the one who knew the place also saw the angel and it was as if nothing is happening why? because the threshing floor of Onan was eventually the mountain of Moriah have you forgotten Genesis chapter 22 God told Abraham that take down your only son the son you love and take him to the mountain of Moriah and sacrifice him there for me and the Bible said Abraham took a son and when they got to the mountain God said I now know you love me I will not let you sacrifice your son but I have prepared a lamb for myself caught up in the ticket and the Bible said that Abraham took the lamb and killed the lamb and the blood of that lamb was still speaking in that place so when the angel got there God said I have remembered the sacrifice some of you are just playing in life you don't even know what Jesus has done you don't understand mysteries that is why your life is some way you don't understand mysteries. Onan knew that this is the mountain of Moriah. This is the very place that Abraham sacrificed a certain lamb and he was about to sacrifice a, 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 his son. This is the very place. If I am here, no devil, no angel, 
and when the angel got in between the earth that place of the threshing floor and the heavens God said it is enough what suddenly brought mercy in the heart of God suddenly God started having mercy it is enough ah, today I know what God is about to say over your life after the revelation of the blood has come to you sickness it is enough sorrow it is enough tears it is enough shame it is enough I don't have a church here setbacks it is enough the power of sin it is enough hey addictions it is enough setbacks is enough clap your hands and shout is enough the blood is speaking thank you for watching to have access to this message and many others subscribe to our youtube page and get unlimited access to messages Grace Mountain Ministries, located at Seven Days Junction, off the Achimota of Ancor Barrier, Accra. For prayer, counseling, and further information, you can contact us on 0552-504-085. God richly bless you.